The Swatch Group have just announced their latest money-making project. It's in collaboration with Blogpun, it's the 50 Fathoms, and this is why I think it's garbage, but also genius. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Adrian, and this is simply where I document my thoughts about things in the watch world, things that I find interesting in the watch world, and I'm currently in Banff, Canada, and looking out for bears, because there's legitimately a risk. I mean, I'd like to see a bear, but also wouldn't like to see a bear. So as I mentioned, the Swatch Group have just launched their latest money-making adventure. This time it's with Blanc Pan. Previously, it was with Omega, with the Moon Swatch, which was massively successful, both for Swatch themselves, but also for Omega. The uptick in sales on the full steel Moon Watch, the sales of that have skyrocketed simply because of that cheap plastic version that Swatch made. If you're unaware of the relationship between the Swatch group or Swatch and the rest of the watch industry, Swatch pretty much own most of the big players within the watch world. They are an absolute powerhouse. And within this family are some of the most legendary watches of all time. The 50 Fathoms is nowhere near as popular as the Seamaster, as nowhere near as popular as the Submariner. The design feels outdated. The case is oversized. It just feels a bit clunky. And this is one of the reasons why I feel this collaboration is garbage. So it's quite obvious that the Swatch Group wanted to use this collaboration, wanted to use a platform of Swatch to increase awareness of the 50 Fathoms, to increase awareness of Blanc Pan. However, I feel like that's a bit of a basic move is to just use a platform to increase awareness. If you want something to be popular, then why don't you just actually create something to be popular? Just create something well-proportioned, good case size, good design, and put it out there. Guys, I'll be honest, my brain's just constantly thinking about bears. If you see a bear, say so, because I'm looking this way and you guys are looking out that way. I feel like you'd hear it, wouldn't you? Massive bear couldn't walk through the woods without cracking a whole load of tree branches. So that's one of the reasons why I think this collaboration is garbage, is, is that it's a very easy, lazy way of creating promotion, creating hype around an underperforming, undesired watch range. I feel it's a bit odd uh, Swatch making a thing about using recycled plastic for the NATO strap when you've got a plastic pretty much single-use watch with a movement that's also full of plastic. So it's kind of like, oh look we're being green. No you're not. You're absolutely not being green. You're adding to the whole consumerism. Your watch is literally the equivalent of a plastic bag. And that's my second main point about the watch being garbage. The watch is garbage. It's, it's a plastic made watch, a very expensive plastic made watch. 320 pounds for a plastic watch with a movement that you're not gonna service, a movement that you can't service. It's, it's a highly expensive watch, especially when you compare it to the normal Swatch System 51s. I love the concept of the System 51. The idea that they've made a highly automated, robotic made movement, very affordable, and it's still mechanical. That's very cool. That's modern day horological innovation, is to be able to create a movement in the way that they have. But go on to swatch.com and you will find a full steel, full metal System 51 watch for £100 cheaper than this plastic watch on a NATO strap. Quite clearly not bashing NATO straps, NATO straps are really fantastic. Much more rugged than a bracelet, much more sporty than a bracelet, but significantly cheaper to make than a steel bracelet. Now that brings me to the genius part about this watch. It's just incredible marketing. The first time I noticed this idea of creating a cheap version of a product, getting the community to pay for it, and then it actually just being a hidden way of advertising, marketing a product, was with a horology brand, MBNF, Maximilian Busa and Friends. Their watches are incredible and crazy in all sense of that. Uh, including the price. Their watches are easily over £100,000 and there aren't many watch media people who have £100,000 to spend on a watch. So how do you get around the fact that watch media don't have the money for your product and you don't have a marketing budget big enough to appease them to get a nice positive article. You create a very accessible version of your product and you make it exclusive. MBNF made the Mad One and to buy it was invite only. And it just so happens that the large majority of people who got the invites were watch media. And if you got an invite and you got the watch, you want to share it. 
a perfect activity to get watch media paying to market your product, a genius move. And that's exactly what the Swatch Group is doing with these plastic watches. And just like what Omega saw with the uptick in the sales of their, their own made Speedmasters through watch geeks and hype people sharing photographs and videos of just like what I'm doing now, of the plastic made products giving these guys free advertising, promoting an accessible version of a watch that is in fact just promoting the full price version. Now, will I be getting one? Absolutely, because I think some of them are absolutely killer. The gray one is awesome. I do like, I'm a sucker for little touches of gimmicky heritage. I do like the fact that some of the watches have the old vintage style of the Blancpain logo. I do like the fact that Blancpain have never made a quartz watch and the Swatch collaboration has carried on that, that tradition. And this is a mechanical watch, albeit a very cheaply plastic made mechanical watch. It's still part of the Blancpain heritage. I love the fact that they've captured the essence of the beautifully rounded, beautifully domed bezel. They've carried it on and the bezel is also loomed. That's a killer touch. There is a little element of hot horology, little nods of hot horology with applied markers, albeit they're just cheap applied markers, but it's still the concept. I love the fact that people are calling the dial Fume dials. It's just a f***ing gradient color because it's part of Blanc Pond, they want to call it Fume and give it all the pretentious names. It's fun, it's a piece of fun. It's expensive fun. That's what annoys me about this is, it doesn't need to be 320 pounds. It's gonna break very, very quickly, very cheaply made. This is literally the McDonald's of watchmaking. You know it's crap, you know it's not gonna do anything good for you, but sometimes you just want a hit of fun. Sometimes you just want that dirty burger. Guys, what do you think of this collaboration, Swatch? and blanc pan. Will you be getting one? If you don't like the strap, you can always go to barkandjack.com and sort yourself out with a, a significantly nicer NATO strap. And a NATO strap that'll outlast the watch, no doubt. Guys, drop a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this, on this collaboration, but also which colorway do you prefer? If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you like the style of this video, then hit the subscribe button down there and that little bell icon to get notifications when I drop a new video. If you're on Instagram, give me a follow at Adrian Barker and at Bark and Jack. What else can you do? I think that's it. I'll see you guys soon. Take care.